بالله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته the respected brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala we're going to take some benefit from the tafsir of al-shaykh al-allama al-shaykh abdul rahman bin nasr al-sa'di rahimahullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al-imran إن مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون الحق من ربك فلا تكن من الممترين. The similitude of Isa before Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust and he said to him be and he was. The truth comes from your Lord so do not be of the doubters. Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'idi rahimahullah, he said the Christians have an erroneous belief regarding Isa for which they have no argument. So basically they have an, a false belief about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. They don't believe that Isa is a prophet messenger. They believe he's some of them, they even say he's God. And many of them, they say he's son of God. So all this is a false belief, and they have no argument. There is no proof and evidence that they have with them, ex except they're uh, emotionally driven. But there is nothing that they have with them in the Bible. Nothing. If you look out in the Bible, you're not going to find anything that supports their argument. Nothing. Whether weak or strong, to validate it. So they don't have anything. Even weak, a weak argument, there is nothing there. There is nothing that they have. Uh, and yet, they still believe in false belief. He said, they say that since he was born in the absence of a father, they have a right to accept him as the son and equal to Allah. So this is the reason why they believe that he is a son of God or he is God. Because of the fact that he didn't have a father. But they don't understand the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his power is something we cannot even imagine. And look at Uzair. Uh, Uzair was one of the prophets of Bani Israel, children of Israel. The, the Jews, they said, Uzair is the son of Allah. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرُ بْنُ اللَّهِ And the Jews, they said, Uzair is the son of Allah. Reason being, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he caused him to die for 100 years. And he brought him back to life. So they, uh, after this incident, they believed, some, the Jews, they believed that he was the son of, that Uzair was the son of Allah. But this is all false. Because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revived him because he said, when he saw Jerusalem being demolished <coughs> by a very tyrant king, because that king, he was, he was against the religious people. And he would hunt them down and kill them and uh, destroy the copies of the Torah. So when uh, Uzair, when this fitna started, Uzair, alayhi salam, he left, he left that city. And he looked at the city being demolished. And then he said, Anna yuhi hadihi lahu ba'da mawtiha. So he was like amazed at the power of Allah. He was not like saying that, how can Allah revive this? No. But he was amazed. How, can Allah, how could Allah do all this? He was like in, in, uh, astonished and amazed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to show him a sign in himself. So he caused him to die actually for 100 years. Uzair, he, had his, he, has, he had his food with him, and he had his donkey with him. It's in Surah Al-Baqarah. 
and uh, he brought him back to life. So he said, how long have you been dead? He said, uh, uh, a day or part of a day. He said, nay, you have been dead for 100 years. Look at your food. It has not changed a bit. Still intact, subhanAllah. So this individual, they don't understand the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at this food. I mean, uh, you know, originally the food goes bad and it gets spoiled. But Allah controls the air, controls everything. So if Allah commands the air not to spoil it, it's not going to get spoiled. It's like the fire, when Allah commanded the fire not to burn Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his power is beyond our imagination. So that's why these people, they, get mis- they, they got misled because they don't get it. They don't understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can do anything. He can create uh, Adam as Adam alayhi salam. He didn't have a father, he didn't have a mother. So w- which one is more amazing in terms of creation? Is it Isa or Adam? Adam. Yeah, no doubt. But yet, they don't get it. They don't get it. So that's why the Jews, they said, Uzair is the son of Allah. They don't understand that Uzair, he was only a prophet, a righteous prophet. And Allah wanted to show him a sign so that he can go back to his people and tell them that the Qiyamah is true, that Allah can resurrect the bodies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends down the rain and he gives example. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revives the earth after it's been dead. And then he, he, he uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he connects that with the resurrection. As he's able to bring out vegetation from a dead, you know, soil, then he is also able to bring back uh, the bodies, to bring them back to life. To resurrect them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very important for us, for our belief, that we believe this, because these are from the essential uh, aspect of Iman. Sheikh, he said, they say that since he was born in the absence of a father, they have a right to accept him as the son and equal to Allah. This thinking cannot even raise any doubt, let alone being accepted as an argument. The birth of Isa alayhi salam in the manner in which it was conducted is a proof for the fact that Allah is the sole creator and life giver and all means and effects are dependent on his desire and intention. For example, Juan medicine is a mean, an effect. Now, how many people take medicine? So many people. Some of them, they take it and they don't get, uh, they, they don't get better. Subhanallah. <laughs> the same medicine. That shows you that the only one who can make it work is Allah. Yes. Subhanallah. Amazing. Allahu Akbar. It's just amazing. This means like, okay, we take precautions and everything. But subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control. If Allah does not want that mean to work, it's not going to work. No matter how much you take. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. The Shaykh he said, so this negates the view, their view, point, rather than endorsing it. This also proves that nothing from the creation is worthy of being equated with Allah in any manner. Additionally, Allah gave birth to Adam in the absence of, they shouldn't say Allah gave birth. Since that's, that's not a good thing to say. Gave birth to Adam? No, Allah created Adam. Uh, there's a mistake here. Allah created Adam. They say, you see, he gave birth. This is wrong. This is very wrong. So, uh, yeah, you know, he did not mean that, uh, whoever translated it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to read it again. So, he says, Allah gave birth to Adam in the presence, in the absence, sorry, in the absence of both a father and a mother. No, you can't say Allah gave birth. No, 
because Allah is not human. No, no, no. Allah created. created. Yes, created. Uh -huh. Yes. So this is a this is a serious mistake. We need to tell them about it. Is it is he saying he's not quoting what the like what is the two the two sentences before that? Probably Allah alam. So they're saying that nothing from the creation is worthy of being equated with Allah in any manner. Additionally, Allah gave birth to Adam in the absence of both a father and a mother. This makes it imperative for the Christians to have the same belief for Adam as they have about Isa. Probably, Allah alam, probably, but it's still confusing. It's still confusing. It shouldn't be said. If, the, he's, if he said, the Christians say, it will be clear. If someone reads like that, he's going to get what? No, it's, 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 it's confusing. Yes. So he said, it is, uh, uh, right, it makes it imperative for the Christians to have the same belief for Adam as they have about Isa. If Isa, by being born in the absence of a father, can be believed can be believed to be the son of Allah and a deity, then Adam, more preferably, should be claimed as being a deity for worship, since he was born in the absence of both father and a mother. That is why Allah declares the similitude of Isa before Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust, then he said to him, be, and he was. The truth comes from your Lord. Narrating the events and incidents of the prophets of the past is in fact part of the special cultivation that Allah has stipulated for his prophet and his followers. So be, be not of the doubters. That is, whatever Allah has mentioned, you must never be in doubt regarding it. This noble verse and the one that follows both prove an important principle and regulation. If a reported argument based on revelation about some belief or deed proves it correct beyond doubt, then one must have solid conviction that anything that tries to oppose it is nothing but falsehood. So this is very important. So what the sheikh is saying, now we have a principle, anything that Allah informed of, from the affairs of either the affairs of Al-Ghayb, the affairs of the Unseen, or anything, a command or a prohibition or things like that, then we have to believe in it without doubt. We have to have firm conviction in that, and we should not doubt it. Like some people, they try to use their common sense. They're trying to, uh, you know, use their intellectual um, reasoning with it. Like Yusuf al-Qaradawi, and uh, may Allah give him what he deserves. One time he was talking about the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that death will be brought on Yom al-Qiyamah as a ram. And it will be slaughtered. It will be slaughtered. And then a caller will call out, O oh, people of Jannah, <laughs> eternity, there will be no death. O oh, people of hellfire, eternity, there will be no death after this. So the people of Jannah, they will rejoice more and more, and the people of uh, Hellfire, they will add to their misery. So Al-Qaradawi, he said, this doesn't make sense. Subhanallah. How can you say something like that? Because these are from the affairs of the unseen. You don't know the reality of these matters. And since uh, the Prophet Sallallahu has informed us about that, and it, it's an authentic hadith, then we have to believe in it, and we have to have firm conviction in that. And we should not have any doubt or use our in, uh, own intellect trying to, to reason. Like some people, they deny Adab al-Qabr, the punishment of the grave. And uh, they use some shubuhat, so they have some doubt about that. But Ahl sunnah alhamdulillah, they believe in everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic sunnah. The Shaykh said, then one must have solid conviction that anything that tries to oppose it is nothing but falsehood. And any objection that is raised regarding it is definitely wrong. This is whether one can explain the doubt cast on it or not. Not given an appropriate explanation to an objection does not mean that the proven act of belief is wrong. 
everything is, is in opposition to the truth can only be falsehood. Allah decrees at another place. Apart from the truth, what else can there be except falsehood? With the help of this principle, numerous confusions can be resolved, which are raised by those who indulge in unnecessary debate or illogical discussion. If someone can answer such objections, well and good. Otherwise, his, actual, his, actually, his actual duty is to prove the truth with convincing and compelling argument and invite others to accept it. Like, for example, you find that the enemies of Islam, they, they cast doubt around the Quran. For example, they say, the Quran, there is conflict in ayat in the Quran. They say the Quran is contradictory. So, for example, they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, This is just an example. You will not be able to guide, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will not be able to guide the one you love. Right? Another ayah, he said, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ اللَّهِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ you, you surely guide to the straight path. So they say, look, here he said, you, 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 you will not be able to guide, and here he said, you surely guide. So they said, look at the confusion, you see? But they don't understand, they don't get it, that guidance is of two types, right? Guidance is of two types. You have the guidance of al-irshad, instructing and showing the path. For example, if someone comes to you and say, where's 95? Right? I want to go to Tampa, for example, or I want to go to um, Daytona. I want to go north, for example, or I want to go to Miami. So you're going to say, Akhi, you make a right on Palmetto, and when you get to North Lake, you make a left, keep going straight, if you're going south, it's going to be on the left-hand side. If you're going north, it's going to be on, on the right-hand side. So you have instructed him, and you have showed him the, the, the path. This is also guidance. So the job of the prophet messengers is to show the path and to make, make, make it clear to the people. Leave no uh, uh, ambiguity. They make it very clear to the people and to show them the path. But does it necessarily mean that they're going to accept it? Some of them might accept, some of them may not accept. Because all the prophet messengers, they call the people to the truth. They call them to the book that Allah sent to them. Like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he called his people, Quraysh, to this Quran. Some of them, Alhamdulillah, accepted. Some of them did not accept. So this is the guidance of Irshad, guiding and instructing and preaching and showing. So you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? Okay, now there is another guidance, which is the guidance of tawfiq, success. This is, can be only from Allah, right? So you can lead that horse to the water, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides that horse, he's going to go to the water and drink. Another horse, he may not be interested in drinking. You see, some people, you gave them, two people, they come looking about answers, look, uh, for, uh, looking for answers about certain things that they had doubt about Islam. And then you give them the Quran. Say, okay, read this book, all those doubts will be clarified. So you give the first one, second one. One of them, he calls you the next day, he said, I want to accept Islam because I'm 100% convinced this is what I want. The second one, he said, no, I'm not interested. Allah did not wish to guide the second one, but he guided the first one. Like, for example, the, uh, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu and he's very sad, very sad, actually, very sad that... The uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, he was a very loyal man to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and he defended him. He defended the Prophet ﷺ. He was the leader of Quraysh. He was a very noble man. 
But subhanallah, even with that, and he knew, he knew what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon is the truth. But he did not accept it because of tribalism, because of the tribe. What the people are going to say about him, he was worried more about this. And he said, subhanallah, he said, إِنِّي لَا أَعْلَمُ أَنَّ دِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ مِنْ خَيْرِ الْبَرِيَّةِ دِينَ Subhanallah. He said, I know that the, the deen of Muhammad, the religion of Muhammad, is the best deen of the creation. لَوْلَا الْمَلَامَةُ أَوْ حَدَارُ مَسَبَّةٍ لَوَجَدْتَنِي بِدَاكَ سَمْحًا مُبِينًا He said, if it was not for the fact that they're going to rebuke me, they're going to censure me and rebuke me and verbally abuse me. Masabbatin. They will, they, will, they will malign me and, and speak ill about me. I would have submitted. Because of these two barriers, he did not submit. Even though in his heart, he knew what Muhammad Sallallahu was upon is the truth. You see, it shows you right here that guidance is in the hand of Allah. That's why Allah revealed the ayah. إِنَّكَ, إنك لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ You Muhammad, you will not, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will not be able to guide the one you love. Even though he loved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to guide his uncle, and he was at his deathbed, and he was saying to him, O oh, uncle, say la ilaha illallah. I will defend you with it on yawm al-qiyamah. But he died upon the religion of his forefathers. Abu Jahl was there, enemy of Allah. You see? The bad companionship. Subhanallah. Look, there is a thin line. Look, subhanallah, you can either die upon Islam or die upon Kufr. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanallah make us all firm. May Allah make us all firm. And may Allah guide us to the straight path. And may Allah protect us from trials and tribulations. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sallam.